we're going to start section 3.6 now, which is a different type of argument. We're going to learn about Euler diagrams and see logistic arguments. So you've probably heard some of these phrases without actually realizing that you have heard some of these phrases before. Um, and some of them are likely from probably math classes in prior semesters or in elementary school. We're gonna deal with these quantifiers of all, some, none. You've heard phrases like all squares are rectangles. And then you've got other quantifiers that say like some rectangles are squares. Okay. So we've all used quantifiers at some point to classify things. you make generalizations, you talk about groups, all the students in this class, all the students at this school, all the workers, whatever it is. So the type of arguments that use quantifiers are called C-logistic arguments. Or C-logisms. We don't have a way to discuss whether that statement is true or false immediately. So I can't apply this concept of a truth table. So really to validate these, we will use what's known as an Euler diagram. So Euler, I know it looks like Euler, but it's Euler. It is a mathematician, so it is a name of someone. Do I care if you pronounce it right? Not really. But this way, when I'm mentioning it, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So what I'm going to do is an example to kind of walk through what this represents. We're going to do one that hopefully you think would have a natural conclusion. So if I tell you all dolphins are mammals, and all mammals are vertebrates, then the conclusion you can hopefully kind of see has to follow is because dolphins are mammals and mammals are vertebrates, the conclusion is all dolphins are vertebrates. Okay. So we wanna see why is this valid? And this idea is going to help us then when we have different types of arguments to determine if something is true or not. So what I'm going to do is we're talking about groups of things. So we're really going to be drawing sets. I've got my universal set here. And I've really got two premises that create our argument. So I'm going to try drawing the first premise here. 
we are told that all dolphins are mammals. So if this is my dolphin circle, because every single dolphin is a mammal, the mammal circle has to sit completely surrounding it. Okay. So here, the dolphin circle fall completely within the mammal circle. So when I go to add this second premise now, okay. the only thing I can possibly do to have all mammals be vertebrates is I have to draw my vertebrae circle around the mammals. So it forces my dolphin circle to be completely within this vertebrae circle. Okay. So the dolphins fall completely in the mammals and the mammals fall completely in the vertebrates. So all dolphins are vertebrates. that dolphin circle has to fall within the vertebrates to guarantee these two premises hold. So pretty much your goal is gonna try to be, can you contradict the conclusion with while keeping both of those or three of those premises intact? So now that we have this second type of method, how do we know when to use this versus when to use truth tables? And basically, you're going to look for some key words and phrases. And those will tell you which method is going to be best to use. Okay. If you see any of those connectives, and, or, if, then, if and only if, Not. Those are exactly what we did that have some type of symbolic form. You're going to use a truth table for this. Okay. If you see quantifiers, all are something. Some are. Some are not. None are. These quantifiers don't correspond to some type of symbolic form. You're going to use this method of an Euler diagram. Okay. So each one of these four statements are going to translate to some type of diagram involving a set. 
And so I want to show you what those are like. And then pretty much we're just going to do some more examples. I got like four more. But the four statements translate into the following Euler diagrams. If you see the phrase, all A's are B's, okay? We've got our universal set, and I'm gonna copy and paste this four times for all four phrases to make my life a little easier. If you have our A circle, and there's stuff inside of here, the B circle is going to fit completely around it. Okay. If you hear the phrase, some A's are B's. Then we've got our A circle. There's some overlap with B circle. Okay. And because some A's are B's, you know there's something that's going to sit inside of here. If we have the phrase no A's are B's, then these two circles are gonna be completely disjoint. So here's A's, here's B's. There is no overlap between the two. And since you started with A's, there's stuff that's inside the A's. The phrase some A's are not B's. would still indicate that there's a bit of overlap between the two. So here's A, here's B. But since some A's are not B's, that guarantees there's something sitting inside of here. Okay. So let's try one more example first of something that's going to hopefully make sense. And again, you can't see another way to draw it. But then we're gonna do some examples where it's invalid and those are definitely harder than valid. Okay. So we're going to determine whether the syllogism is valid or invalid. First one we're gonna do is no fish are mammals. All cows are mammals. Therefore, no fish are cows. So I've got these two premises. We'll start with drawing premise one. We've got a fish circle. So I'm just gonna abbreviate it with an F. We've got a mammal circle. No fish are mammals. So they have to be completely separate. Okay. And so you got some fishies sitting in here. Now I'm going to copy and paste this 
and go to premise two. We are told all cows are mammals. So that means my cow circle must be drawn inside of here. I have no other option, okay? Because of that, my cow circle can never intersect with the fish circle because it sits in the mammals. So this argument is going to be valid because this conclusion has to follow. The cows and fish circle will not overlap, okay? So here, the fish and cow circle can't overlap without violating the first premise. Okay. So the conclusion must follow from the two premises. So the argument is valid. Okay. Let's try a couple more. And we'll do one that now I'm going to be able to contradict the conclusion. So our argument is all planets are satellites. We are told the International Space Station is a satellite. And the conclusion that then has to follow from these two is the International Space Station is a planet. Okay. So let's start with premise one first. There's only one way we can draw that. We've got our universal set we are told all planets are satellites. So here is my planet circle. And here is my satellite circle. Only way I can possibly draw that statement that all planets are satellites. Now I want to go ahead and draw premise two. We are told the International Space Station is a satellite. So all that means is it has to sit somewhere in the blue circle. Technically, I could put ISS here, and that would satisfy the conclusion and that second premise. But I can also put the ISS out here. Okay. It just has to fall in the satellite circle. And if I draw it here, I've satisfied all planets being satellites. I've satisfied the International Space Station being in the satellite circle, but my conclusion doesn't necessarily follow. So these both happen, but the International Space Station does not sit within the planet circle. Okay. So here we can draw a picture So both of these premises are satisfied, but the conclusion does not hold. Okay, because of that, this argument is invalid. Okay. 
So again, you're trying to see, can we contradict the conclusion, but still satisfy those first two? Okay. So I got one more. Try to give you another example of something invalid and deal with the word some. Some chemicals are poisonous. Some poisonous things are beautiful. Therefore, the conclusion that has to happen is some chemicals are beautiful. Okay. So again, two premises, let's start with premise one because there is only one way to draw our starting premise. we are told some chemicals are poisonous. So if I've got my chemical circle, and we've got a poisonous circle, there is some overlap between those two. So there is some stuff in between here. Now I want to go ahead and add premise two. So we are told some poisonous things are beautiful. So if I draw a beautiful circle, draw it out here so I can kind of move it around. We're told some poisonous things are beautiful. So there just has to be overlap between the poisonous and beautiful circle. This makes the poisonous and beautiful circle and the chemical circle inter interact. So some chemicals would be beautiful. But if I put this circle anywhere over here, I'm satisfying this conclusion. So I've got my chemical and poisonous circle intersecting. We also have the poisonous and beautiful circle intersecting. So there's overlap between the things that need to. But that does not cause this conclusion. So I do not necessarily have the chemical and beautiful circle intersecting. Okay. So by drawing this, we can draw the beautiful circle So some of it overlaps with the poisonous circle. But it doesn't need to overlap with the chemical circle. Okay. So the conclusion doesn't have to hold. Okay. Because of that, this argument is invalid. My first two or my first two premises hold, but my conclusion does not. Okay. 